Hello and welcome to our worship services here at Hopewell Baptist Church in Norcross, Georgia. I'm Bishop William L. Shields. I've been the pastor here for over 40 years. Come join us where God is exalted, where Jesus is lifted up, and the unction of the Holy Spirit influences and empowers our worship services. Welcome again. Good morning, Hope Well. Good morning, Hope Well. Merry Christmas, Hope Well. More than a holiday. More than a Chris. 
Jesus the hand of prayer. Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. I, 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 I don't have to uh, prop you up, and I don't have to encourage you, but I will. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus because he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He is our king. Come on, let's lift him up. 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 Higher. Higher, higher, higher. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. I get excited. I get excited about the Lord Jesus. And when you think about this time of year, God executed a perfect plan. He came. He lived. He dwelled. He died. He rose. The, the, the plan is complete because he is coming back. So now we're just, we're just sojourning through here. So while we're here, let's worship him today. I'm Deacon Lawrence, myself, along with Deacon uh, Elder Baldwin, and some of the other deacons are here to serve you this week. And if you have a challenge or a problem, let us go to God and see how he will work it out uh, through us. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, again, I come before your throne. And God, I'm so thankful that you don't get tired of us coming to you. And we do come humbly before you, and we know that you are the true and the living God, and we bow down before you. God, we worship you and adore you. We know that you are the creator of all things. You are the creator of the universe. But God, I know that you even care about me and the hairs that, the hairs that used to be on my head. You know them, Lord God. You know all about us. And you care about us, and I thank you for that. God, we, a few of your children, have gathered in this place. Fill us with your spirit, Lord God. Fill us with your anointing so that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we can't worship you in our flesh. We can't worship you in ourselves. We need you to worship you. So we pray for your anointing today on this place. Bless this congregation here at Hopeware. There, there, there are many needs in this place, but God, you got them. Lord God, there's healing that's needed. You got healing. Lord, you have everything we need, but we need you right now. You said if we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all things shall be added unto us. And we thank you, Lord God, for this day. Bless the choir. Bless these men as they sing. Anoint them. Let them sing from their hearts. Bless the ushers as they greet. Lord God, anoint them, let them greet from their heart. Lord God, bless our pastor in a special way. Renew in him, renew him, Lord God, and let him preach from your heart, Lord God, that he might, he might bring the word of God today. Anoint his words, anoint his energy, anoint his power, Lord God, and bless us as a congregation, that we might hear your word, that it might fall on fertile ground, that it might fall on ground, and might grow and produce, Lord God, and cause us to move and have energy in a new way. We thank you for this day. We call on you in the mighty name of Jesus. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Woo. I'm sorry. I, 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 I just get excited when I get to tell someone about Jesus. I get excited about football. I get excited about my family. But when it comes time to tell you about Jesus, see, I went to the barbershop, I still go, and, and he was talking about all this other stuff about what Christmas is not. I had to shut him down and let him know that for me, Christmas is about Jesus. And he came, he came. So we have to get it right. It's a lot of stuff out there. Uh, I'm sorry, Pastor David. It's a lot of stuff. People want to deny it. People don't want you to acknowledge it. People, people have all this and that to say, but for me, I, I trust in the Lord Jesus. And it's all about Jesus Christ. And he said there's no other way to the Father but through the Son. And the plan was he came to a virgin. Here's our, here's our, here's our scripture. Amen. Amen. I don't know how you follow that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> our scripture lesson's coming from Luke 2, starting at the first verse. Amen. You tell the story, brother. Don't, don't, don't hold back. You got to tell the story. Amen. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Luke 2, starting the first verse. And it came to pass in those days 
that were, they went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world would be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius, the governor of Syria, all would be taxed, every one unto his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because it was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that they that were there, the days were accomplished, and that she would be delivered. And she brought first her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. He's telling you right now, you got to make room in your inn for Jesus. He was telling the story like those barbers, instead of worry about everything else, put, make room in your inn for Jesus. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For unto you this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. May the Lord add a special blessing to the readers and hearers of his holy word. Amen? It is altar call time. Whatever you bring up here, you leave it up here. You don't take it back to your seats. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let us make room in the end for Jesus. Because after all, ha, this season, he is the reason for the season. So today as we stand, we give thanks to our bishop, William Shields, Father Lord God, that you may give him a word that can penetrate our heart and saturate us, Lord God. And give us a double anointing, Father Lord God, that we continue to celebrate, Father Lord God. We pray for the assistant pastor, Pastor, pastor Davis, Lord God. We pray for our ministers, Lord God. We pray for each individual, the deacons, the congregation, Lord God, all those that are walking in, Father. May you bless them, Father Lord God. We know that this is Christmas, but Jesus is the reason. So we're going to give him thanks and glory on today to allow the Holy Spirit to fill us. Whereas we can make room in our inn. We run around shopping. We run around doing everything else on Christmas. But have we taken the time to give God glory? Have we taken a salah? A salah meaning to pause. I'm not asking you to go into a sabbatical, but I'm telling you to take Because after all, this season is Jesus is the reason. Father Lord God, you said in Proverbs 8, 17, that you love those that love you. And those that seek you early will find you. Father Lord God, I'm asking you for a double, triple anointing, Lord God. I'm asking you for healing for those that need to be healed, Lord God. Because you already know what we're battling with. You already know what's going on. So on today, Lord God, we're going to open in our in. We're going to open our heart, Lord God, and let you come in. Let you sit with us. Let you commune with us, Lord God. You already know what's going on, Father. We need you, Lord. We're giving you glory, Father. Oh, Lord God, you gave us a son. On to us and you said he will carry the government on his shoulder now if he can carry the government on his shoulder why not us we're more important to him than anything else so find it in your heart to let Jesus in find it to allow the Holy Spirit to come in and saturate you to empower you so you can glorify God because all the glory is for him Lord we thank you we glorify your name because you are worthy Lord God. Come and sit with us, Lord God. Keep us from things that are not of you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Humble us where we need to be humble. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory. 
Magnify the Lord with me. What a pretty little baby. Baby Jesus. Ah. The angels from cry joy to the world. The Lord is gone. Ah. But Mother Mary said, oh, what? Ah, listen. Oh, what?
Christmas. Hallelujah. It is that time of the year. The Word of God tells us that, you know, the Word of God says that they prophesied the coming of the Messiah. 
And even back then, they didn't understand really what God was getting ready to do. They didn't understand the wonderful salvation that he put in place for us. But around about 2,000 years ago, God decided to choose a young teenage girl, hallelujah, to carry the king, hallelujah. She didn't know. But around about that time, this time during that time, there was an expectation because I imagine that she was probably starting to feel something stir up on the inside of her, something that was about to happen, something that was about to take place, something that was about to be birthed into the earth just for us. So I say to you today, don't just sit there like you don't understand what's already happened, what God has done for us, something that he put in place just for us, a new thing that even back then they didn't know anything about. The Bible tells us that even the angels are looking down, wondering about this new covenant that God has put in place just for us. Hallelujah. So in case you didn't know, now I hope you know what you ought to be celebrating on this Sunday, this last Sunday before the birth of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And not only that, he sent him once and he's going to send him again. He's coming back for us. So I hope you're ready. I hope you are ready. I hope you are ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He deserves all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Hallelujah. He is the reason for the season. Hallelujah. All right. If you're not standing, go ahead and stand up with me with your Bibles in your hand. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He did this all for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This was not a hampen stance. It was not, this was something he planned just for each one of you. Hallelujah. So as we remember what he has done, that he died on the cross for us, turn with me to 1 Corinthians in your Bible, chapter 11. We'll be reading from verses 23 through 26 responsibly as we recognize the Lord's Supper. Amen. Every Sunday, with the exception of the first Sunday of the month, Pastor Shields, or the assistant pastor, will partake of the Lord's Supper for the church body and observe as admonished by Jesus Christ in scriptures to do often in remembrance of him. And because we remember Jesus every day, every Sunday this observance will take place. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Congregation? Mm -hmm. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. All together. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he comes. There in the upper room, the Lord took the bread, blessed it, break it, and passed it among them and said, Eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And in the same manner, he passed the cup. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Amen. Our doxology is holy, holy, holy.
Amen, amen. You may be seated. Ushers, please serve the foyer. Choir, please sing. all the mistletoe I'm gonna get to know you better this Christmas and as we trim the tree how much fun is gonna be together this Christmas fireside is blazing bright. We're caroling through the night. And this Christmas will be a very special Christmas for you. and me come on y'all put them hands together come on come on yeah here we go here we go come on y'all hang on the mistletoe i'm gonna get to know you better Trip the tree, how much fun it's gonna be together.
if we can have our courtesy ministry to come recognize our guests and visitors. Good morning, Howell. Isaiah 9, 6 states, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. As we celebrate this Christmas holiday, we need to say this statement. Happy birthday, Jesus. Merry Christmas. When we receive gifts, we need to say, Happy birthday, Jesus. Merry Christmas. When we just fellowship, Happy birthday, Jesus, and Merry Christmas. For our first time guests and visitors, please stand and remain standing until you receive a welcome card from our courtesy ministry. And to all of you, to all of Hopewell, happy birthday, Jesus, and Merry Christmas. Amen, amen. Let's get up and welcome our new visitors. Welcome to Hopewell. Welcome, welcome to Hopewell. Take a moment also to love on your neighbor this morning. Wish them a Merry Christmas. Show some love. Amen. If you've gotten at least two hugs, we're gonna go ahead and turn our attention this morning to our screen announcements, if there are any screen announcements. In an effort to improve our parking lot safety, we are asking our congregation to be cautiously mindful of all pedestrians in our crosswalks and especially watchful of our children and elderly walking through our parking lots. Please watch your speed and drive with the highest degree of safety. We thank you for your support in our safety efforts. Get your stocking stuffers for the young men in your life. The men's ministry will be attending the Atlanta Hawks game on the King holiday. The students are out of school, and this is the perfect opportunity for us to minister to the youth. The Atlanta Hawks will be playing the world champion Toronto Raptors. Tickets are available at floor level, or you can sit up a little higher. Ticket prices are $25 and $69. Both tickets include a $10 food voucher to be used at the concession stands. To place your ticket orders, email crimecrusher at me.com or call 770-367-4508. Cash sales only. Oh well, are you ready for the livest party of 2019? What kind of party are you talking? I mean a real Holy Ghost party. Well, this year in good old Hopewell fashion, we will have our annual watch night service. Doors open at 8 p.m. Service starts at 9. And we will ring in the new year together when the clock strikes 12. Not only would that mark the end of another year, but God would have brought us through another entire decade. Make sure you're there to give your best praise and worship on for the end of 2019. We'll see you there. It's giving season, and a lot of you have been so generous at donating your gently used items to the church. However, we want to make sure that your donations are given to the appropriate ministry. If you're looking to donate your used or new items, 
we are requesting that you do not place your donated items in Faith Hall, but that you will call the Resource Center at 770-448-5475 so that your donations will reach those who need it most. Thank you in this effort. God bless. Christmas is all about Jesus. Luke chapter 2 verses 11 through 14 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel with a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Hope well. Let us not forget the true meaning of the season. Christmas Day is not about just opening our gifts and big holiday meals, but rather opening our hearts with the spirit of giving without the thought of getting. Jesus Christ knows who's been naughty and nice, so let's celebrate Christmas this year by giving of your time, of your talents, and of your treasures. Merry Christmas, hope well. Visit and share our all-new website, www.hmb church for all things Hopewell, like online giving, live Sunday special service, and Wednesday night Bible study online streaming, and viewing past services online on demand. Finally, connect with Hopewell socially by liking, following, and sharing us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. our screen announcement. So at this time, we're going to walk up our bishop to the pulpit, to the podium. Amen. 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 Good morning. Merry Christmas to all of you. God bless you real good. And uh, it's Merry Christmas because uh, the Lord has invited us to his birthday party. And, and it's an evite that uh, every born again Christian uh, can should answer. And we should celebrate this evite from heaven. Uh, thank God that 2,000 years ago Jesus was born, and we will do that in our sermon this morning. How many remember last Sunday's sermon about uh, Mary and Elizabeth uh, coming together, and when Mary uh, saluted Elizabeth, then John the Baptist leapt for joy in Elizabeth's womb, and, and God taught us that there was two covenants coming together. The Old Testament covenant and New Testament covenant coming together. The prophecy and the prophecy of fulfillment coming together. And they came together because these two chosen women, one was carrying John the Baptist, the other Jesus the Christ. And even uh, before they were born into the world, they were born into the spirit world and they knew each other. So that was a awesome message has been just been living with me these two covenants colliding uh, down through the week well today we're gonna go and we're gonna look at um, the king that uh, was born in the first king size bed that you see on the front of your bulletin yeah 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 the first king and I don't mean California king size e. I mean the king size bed amen the bed yeah 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 I mean the king the king was born in this, in this, in this, in this stable, in this animal trough. We'll talk about that later. Right now, I want to remind you that um, the bears, make sure, uh, make sure that you go online to cancerthemovie.com and order your St. Jude bears as, as our goal is to bless St. Jude with hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in the connection with our film. 
thank you for praying for that as well. Now, there are $10 bears, the smaller ones, out in the foyer that you can take with you and have to snuggle on. And, and it has also the logo with Defeat Cancer on that. We're going to deliver the ones that you order online or the ones that you fill out the forms in the foyer. We will hand deliver them to St. Jude in, in uh, Tennessee and in Florida. Hand deliver them to the children uh, with your blessing that you will write on either online or on the forms outside that you will write your message to them. And thank God for your praying for the film. It's in the hands and the negotiating uh, part is all but done with Netflix. So you'll be able to see it as I'm working on the sequel now to Saint. So bless God for, for this uh, message of getting across now. Uh, each week then there is, seems to be another new cancer related illness in our church family. Let's, let's be prayerful and, and bless God for every time you can sit here or stand here or worship here and be cancer-free. That's a blessing. <clears throat> While I'm speaking, every three minutes, every three minutes, some family will hear your child has cancer. Every three minutes. Every three minutes. One out of every 285 children uh, before they reach the age of 20 will be diagnosed with cancer. One out of every 20, 285. So if your child is now above 20 and has been blessed to be uh, here with you or, or and cancer free, then what a blessing, what a great blessing it is. Thank God in the name of Jesus. We love you, Father, we thank you. Come now, come now trustees, we wanna continue with the worship service. I know Many of you have family coming in town for the Christmas uh, celebration, and uh, and I know that uh, more people are at the first service so they can get out and and uh, and do the and continue their Christmas shopping. Thank you, ministers, for the ministers' fellowship on yesterday. And uh, thank did, did, did we, Carnell, did you make your did minister Carnell make his announcement already? Where is he? Morning, morning, morning. I stand on behalf of Shepherd's Care this morning asking you to uh, open up your heart for this pastor that has been with us all of these years, getting ready to celebrate 40 years with us. Isn't that awesome? 40 years of his life with us. So many have come to know Jesus Christ because of him. Some been filled with the Holy Spirit. Babies been baptized uh, through dedication. So we thank God for your giving. So this is a time for you to give back to him. If you look in your pew, in the back of the pew, there should be an envelope there for you to give uh, your Christmas love to our pastor if you do not see an envelope there, uh, please feel free to get one of the regular envelopes and put his name on it. If you make out a check, make that check out to Pastor William L. Shields. So this is the time for you to show your love. So please give back to him. Now you might be getting ready to go on vacation, so this is a good time to go ahead and do it today before you forget. So thank you for your giving. Now it's time for us to give back to the Lord what he has given to us to return to him our blessings because he has truly blessed us. So if you would stand. As we prepare our hearts, O oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I stand before you thanking you for yet another day. Thanking you, Jesus, that you have come in the midst of us, that you dwell not with us, but also in us. 
So, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to give back to you because God gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ. So surely, for all the blessings that God has given to us, that we can obey his word and give back 10% of what he's given to us because it's all his anyway. So it's time for you to return it back to him. So as you give, give with a cheerful heart and come with the name of Jesus on your lips and come with a leap of joy and come acting like you are glad that this is Jesus' birthday. So Father God, we lift up this prayer of giving to you right now. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Follow the directions of the ushers. Giving honor to God, oh gracious and merciful Father, we thank you this day 
Father, we thank you for your gifts of Jesus Christ, that you have given us an opportunity to give back unto you, Lord. Lord, we just ask favor, prosperity, Lord. Father, love that will go forth the same way you loved us, Lord Jesus, for one another, Lord. Let us come into unity, Lord. Loving one another, Lord. And let the hearts of your people give back unto your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let this offering be. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. To build your kingdom, to build your people. Let it be running over with abundance, Lord, in your people's life that they may be identified as your people, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good afternoon, everyone. For those of you who thought it not robbery to come out and praise the Lord with us today, we thank you. Happy holidays. Some of us are part of the group, wholehearted, the ones who are up here now. David is a former member that's come back today, Gresham, a tenor. And this is the men's choir version of Silent Night by the Temptations. In my mind, y'all sing along with us. Ooh, I want you to be free. Ooh, all my friends, Ooh, won't you listen to me?
you men of faith choir been a while bones been a while bones as you let a song you yeah. amen I think we all feel mighty welcome to Jesus birthday party amen welcome to Jesus birthday party all stand please with your Bible in your hand or your or the word in your hand, please stand to honor the reading of the word and the election of the title. Again, I reiterate on last Sunday the two covenants coming together. The old covenant in the womb of Elizabeth and the new covenant in the womb of Mary the prophecy and the fulfillment collided. And today we come now to uh, after the collision. <laughs> after the collision, after John the Baptist was born, then there in the king's eyes bed, 
in a stable in an animal trough in a lowly little town called Bethlehem where a star that shined away and pointed the way to he who not would be king, who he who is king. I'm so happy to look at the face of Rachel Mack over there. She she had to go back to the Mayo Clinic for the final the final word from from the the Pharisees. But as she went back to Florida, as she went, she was totally healed. She is now 100% cancer free. As of two days ago, as she went. Yeah, 10 were healed, but only one came back. <clears throat> and Rachel's, ever since our revival night of healing, she, she's been coming back. Amen, Jesus. Come now, let us reason together. This is a teach, teach uh, sermon for... Uh, the solidness of Christmas. So let us go to Luke chapter 1, verses 30 through 35. Only five verses that are magnificent, dynamic, and powerful. As we teach, teach this Christmas message. Beginning with the 30th verse, let's read together, please. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Our title is simply Christmas Miracles. You may be seated. You do know that uh, the Christmas season is all about Christmas miracles. Yeah, yeah. Today's uh, the Sunday before the Christmas celebration. Um, let us rejoice in the miracles of Christmas. What a difference Christmas makes. Uh, wasn't planned this morning. I'm going to try and regurgitate again. What a difference Christmas makes other than jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. What a difference Christmas makes other than uh, uh, all I want for Christmas is you. What a difference Christmas makes other than chestnuts roasting on an open fire. What a difference Christmas makes other than Santa Claus is coming to town. What a difference Christmas makes other than Santa Claus comes uh, straight to the ghetto. What a difference Christmas makes uh, uh, for real, for real. What a, Chris, what a difference Christmas makes. Christmas is a miraculous time of year. You ought to claim some miracles in this miraculous time of the year. You ought to, you ought to, God favored this time of the year. 
by being born, you ought to claim the Christmas miracles in your lives. Spiritual, physical, financial, relationship healings, claim the Christmas miracles in your life. Grouches turn into givers. Cynics are turned into softies this time of the year. But this morning, we're going to look at the real miracles of Christmas. Advent is one of the times when we are confronted with what Christians really believe. Now, the world has the, have all of their beliefs, and you'll hear all kind of things, and they'll show different kinds of stories and different kind of things going on. Hold, hold, hold the fans. It's not, it's not warm in here. Ushers, ushers, stop walking. I need them here. Stop walking. Stop walking. I need them here. this. Don't, don't pass out fans. Go back. Go back. Don't pass out. Don't pass out. No, I need them here. This is a teach message for it. Yeah, stop walking, please. All right. Here it is. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Ah, um. We need to know the heart of the Christmas miracle. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, watch, watch this. This morning, we're going to look at the very heart of what the followers of Christ call the good news. We, we, we're going to look at three Christmas miracles. Now, if you nod on one of them, you'll miss one-third of the sermon. It's, it's a brief sermon. Uh, now, three Christmas miracles. Miracle number one, God came to earth. That's miracle number one. Now, I know we said Jesus was born on Christmas Day, but, but let, 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 me, let me teach you by scripture, you theologians. Uh, the first miracle is God came to earth. Many people believe that Jesus was a good man and, a, and an effective teacher. Some believe, Elder Davis, that he was a great prophet of God. Minister Brooks, some even believe that he was a powerful angel. Minister Cornell, uh, some believe that he was a great teacher. Uh, Minister, 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 Minister Williams, some believe that he was, was a decent and, and wonderful man. Of course, Jesus never claimed to be any of those things. What he claimed, Minister Bell, was far more disturbing to unbelievers than any of those titles. Let me tell you what he claimed. He claimed that he had the power to grant his followers eternal life. John 10, verse 28. He claimed to have the power to forgive sins. Mark chapter 2, and to answer prayers offered in his name, John chapter 14. He claimed that he and God were one, John chapter 10. In fact, he told his closest friends that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father, John chapter 14. And if that wasn't enough, he claimed to be eternal. John 8, uh, chapter, uh, verse 58, if that wasn't enough, he claimed that, 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 that the work and power of God's kingdom was manifested in his life. Luke uh, chapter 2, verse 18, if that wasn't enough, he also claimed that relationship with God depended on believing in him. John chapter 14, understandably, his friends and followers were often confused by these claims as well. It's almost like they were saying to themselves, surely Jesus didn't mean to say what I think he said. In fact, up until the very end, doubt and confusion was still very much a part of their response to Jesus. They all accept John the Beloved deserted Jesus on the night he died. And one of the close friends, Thomas, heard the report of Jesus' resurrection and refused to believe in the resurrection. He said, unless I see it for myself and touch the wounds for myself, I will not believe. At that moment, Jesus showed up. And here's the important part of Jesus showing up. 
Thomas saw Jesus touch his wounds and did the only thing any honest seeker could do. Thomas fell on his knees, the Bible says, and worshiped him as God. Watch this. You got to hear this. He fell on his knees and worshiped Jesus as God. You, you got to get this. As God. In, in, in case you missed it, he fell on his knees and worshiped Jesus as God. That's what Jesus was claiming all the time. He was claiming to be God. The disciples may have been confused, but the religious authorities of his day were not. They did not miss the significance of his claim. On at least two occasions, they wanted to kill Jesus for blasphemy. Jesus did not claim to be a good prophet. He did not claim to be a great angel. He did not claim to be a great religious teacher. Jesus claimed to be God. In his claim, Jesus was telling the followers and, and the Pharisees and non-believers and all, if you want to see God, look at me. Obviously, something extraordinary was going on in Jesus. It was God coming to earth. Stay with me now. You got to get the wholeness of this Christmas so you'll celebrate Christmas in a powerful way henceforth. And you won't let uh, those people uh, uh, talk about Jesus on, on, on the news network. So watch this. And, and this was the first Christmas uh, miracle. Uh, this first miracle makes uh, Christianity different from other religions. Watch this. Listen to the Bible's testimony concerning Jesus. The Bible says he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, uh -huh. things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. And then I love what John says in 1 John 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the right of all God's people. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And now we are already at the second miracle. Uh -huh. Miracle number 2. Uh, uh, God became a man. The second miracle goes along with the first. God came to earth, but not in some flashy way. He came in a simple way. It, it, if I said, it all started on one cool, clear Christmas Eve. The first miracle of Christmas was that it was God who came to earth. Our second miracle of Christmas is, uh, uh, is how he came to earth. The fact that he, God came to earth, number one. And the second miracle is how God came to earth. God became a man because like, not because, but he became one of us. He became a human being. And watch this. This, this. this explains the confusion of his first followers. Certainly in some ways, Jesus was unlike any man they had ever known. And yet, in other ways, in most ways, he was exactly like every man they had ever known, but without sin. It took a while to understand that heaven's glory uh, was clothed in earthly flesh, that, that all the power of heaven was, was, was veiled in human skin. That all 
the power of creative glory, Genesis chapter 1, was wrapped up in a baby's flesh. That all the power that said, let there be light and there was light. Let the firmament divide itself from the firmament. All of this power, not some of the power, but all of this power was clothed in a baby's flesh. The same God that stepped out on nothing and said, let there be. That same God was wrapped up in human flesh. The same God ah, that, 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 that spoke the earth into existence was wrapped up, Charles, in human flesh. The same God veiled himself so that he could be us and be one of us without being one of us. <laughs> but watch it. Paul put it like this. Christ, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God. Uh, he didn't consider it something that he could grasp, but made himself of no reputation. Jesus made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. And notice how Paul, uh, Paul stated there, and, and he humbled himself to become obedient to death. He had to humble himself and he had to be obedient to death because you couldn't kill God. That's a wild moment for me. Watch this. Think about this miracle. Of all the ways God could have chosen to communicate that there was a God to human beings, God chose to become one of us. That's a wild moment. Think of what God could have done. He could have written it across the skies. God could have used thunder and lightning to say, I have come to the earth, Iris. He could have put a giant light show in the heavens. He, he could have invented satellite uh, AT&T universe te television 2,000 years earlier and put it all and put a television in everybody's home so we could see it. But he didn't. He could have done anything he wanted to do because he was creator. But he came in the way we could completely understand. He looked and sounded exactly like us. Well, almost. He also came in a way that communicated his profound sympathy toward us and his empathy in us. The Bible says that he was just like us, yet without sin. He was born like us. He shared our humanity. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. The Bible says he grew like we did physically, spiritually, and uh, socially. Watch this. It, whenever I'm preparing a message, I always do background. I, 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 I did a background on babies. Jesus being born a natural baby. Uh, God being born a natural baby. So I did my background. And those of you in the medical field, you can bear me up. Watch this. Watch this. But and what I found out just just blew me away. And, and this is this is this is, uh, this, is, this, is ba this is baby baby birth in 101. <clears throat> Watch this. It blew me away that babies are born without a kneecap. You didn't know it either. Babies are born without a kneecap. They have cottages that are hard. They don't get a kneecap until they're uh, around two years old and older. Then the bone, the cottage becomes then bone. No wonder they walk, Dr. Shears. No wonder they walk funny before they're two years old. They don't have a kneecap. And I said that, Barbara, to say, 
I wonder if God had kneecaps. I'm, I'm just saying, because he came as a natural baby. The same God that walks around in us, the same God that stepped out on nothing, was born without kneecaps. <laughs> that just blow my mind. That's all right. The doctor, doctor Shields came out of me right there. Watch this. Watch this. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was tempted like we are. Hebrews 4, 15, but yet without being uh, yielded to temptation. He had the same needs, the same drives, the same desires, the same problems, the same pressures in life that we have. The reason he went through all of that was so he could relate to us in 2019 and 2020. Ah, when you try to counsel someone and comfort someone and you've never been there, you have to say what the book says. But when you've been there, ah, yeah, I can't counsel an alcoholic. I've never drank in my life. Then, then, then one who's been there can counsel well and say, this is what happens, and this is what you got to stay away from. But Jesus went through all we have to go through. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He was mistreated. He was abused. He was accused. He was prosecuted. He was lied on. He was persecuted. All of those things so that he could understand when we go through them what we are going through. So when we pray and tell him, he said, I understand. I've been there. So he said, Jesus, Jesus, I'm, Jesus, I, I just need a job. I just need to pay my bills. I just, and Jesus, I've been there. I, I sent the disciples fishing one day to get some money out of a fish mouth. I've been there. When he said, Jesus, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry. He said, I've been there even on the cross, I got thirsty. When he said, Jesus, I'm just tired of being tired. He said, I've been there. I even went to sleep on the boat while it was going across the sea of Galilee when the storm was arising. Then my flesh got weary and my flesh laid itself down. I know what it's like to be tired. I know what it's like to, be, to have friends say, I'll be with you to the end. But when the end come, you can't find them. I know what it's like. I know what it's like when those they will tell you, I'll be there, just, just call me just text me just email me just give me send me an Instagram just send me a tweet and I'll respond and I'll help you out but when you do that there is no response Jesus knows what it's like you see he Jesus knows what it's like to be homeless and, and to need some place to sleep he slept under the trees out there are the olive trees on the Mount of Olives he knows what it's like when your car breaks down and you don't have anything we had to ride his triumphant entry on a borrowed mule, borrowed donkey. Jesus knows what it's like when you're feeling bad and you're feeling sad and you're in need. He knows. He's been there. He's done that. So when you pray to the Father, the one on the right hand of the Father interceding for you is Jesus the Christ who's already been there. Father, I know I've been through what my child is going through. <laughs> No matter what, no matter what you're going through today, God understands because he's been there. He came and he lived a human life. He's been there. The Bible says that he was not only tempted, but he suffered like we did. He experienced real pain with nails in his hand and his feet and and, and pierced in the side. There were times when Jesus was lonely. Yeah, why have you forsaken me? There, there were times when Jesus was tired, fatigued. There were times when he was under great pressure. There were times when he was disappointed, misunderstood, when people didn't treat him right. And he was criticized, he was ostracized, he was politicized and lied on. He understands all of that. God came to earth as a man 
What a miracle. But the third and the last as we close, the third miracle is the most exciting of all. Miracle number three. God came for our benefit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Y'all ain't get it, yeah? Come on, you didn't deserve it. Yeah. In this world, we, we, have, very, we have to work for, we have to deserve benefits. Very, but, but God came to our undeserving selves for our benefits. And to prove that the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He came for our benefit. God, if you can rejoice in the birth of Christ, in the birth of God, he came for our benefit. Doc, doc, he came for our benefit. Maybe, I, maybe you need some scripture because you don't believe what I'm saying. The most exciting miracle about Christmas was why he came. We know that he came, that God came. Well, we, we, we know he came as a man. But, but why did he come? He, he, he came... Uh, uh, Minister Shears, he came for our benefits. He, he came for you and for me. L listen to these verses where Jesus explains why he came to earth, why he came. Here, here, John 18, verse 37, Jesus answered, For this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. John 10, 10, Jesus said, I came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Abundantly. I came to fulfill your life. I came to give you abundance that you can't give yourself. That's why I came. I came so that your life may be fulfilled. That's why I came that you can have a full life. I didn't come for you to cry and moan and, and, and wallow in a pity party. I came to bring you abundance. Yes, I know you got pain. Yes, I know you go through things. Yes, I know you go through the Mayo Clinic. Yes, I know you're going through this and that. But I claim to give you abundant life. So even when while you're going through abundance is still waiting on you even when you're in the midst of you still have the abundant life spiritually and I'll bring it physically and financially if you just hold on and trust me to bring you not just halfway through but all the way through John 12 verse 47 Jesus said I did not come to judge the world but to save it Matthew 20 verse 28 Jesus said just as a son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many that's why I came truth life service eternal life forgiveness that's God's Christmas gift to us 2,000 years ago he said that's why I came I want to drop anchor at truth. May I do that just for a moment here? About truth and service. First, he says, I've come to bring you truth. Truth about what, God? What is the truth? The truth is, watch well, this kind of, you were created to have your needs met in God and in God only. There is a God-shaped vacuum in every person's heart in here right now. The truth is that you matter to God. You may not matter to the person sitting in front of you, behind you, but you matter to God. You may not matter to the person on your job, the person in your neighborhood, but you matter to God. You may not matter to some people in your family, but you matter to God. You are here today because you matter to God. Do you know the enemy tried to steal, kill, rob, and destroy you all week long, even this morning? But because you matter to God, God beat back the enemy even when you didn't know the enemy was there. You matter to God. Don't you, don't you believe that you're no good, that you, that you would amount to anything? You matter to God. That's why you're here right now, because you matter to God. God, God, you matter to God so much that God beat back every devil, every virus, every enemy, every kind, anything that could destroy you, you matter to God. You matter to God that you couldn't go down financially, physically, or spiritually, because you matter to God. Don't you ever believe that you're nobody, you can't make it. You made it because God matters and you matter to God. 
Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I matter to God. Tell him I am somebody because I matter to God. Tell him I am God's child. Tell him I know God came for me. I know I'm a beneficiary of God's blessings. I know I'm a beneficiary of God's love. I know he cares about me. I know he numbers the hairs on my head. I know he blessed me right out of my mess. I know he keeps me in spite of me. I know the God I serve. I matter so much to him. Next time you feel down and out, next time your best friend leaves you, next time somebody leaves you, next, next time somebody put divorce papers on your table or, or a friend say, I don't want to be your friend anymore, you tell them that's all right, but I matter to God. Tell them I might be crying now, but God told me he will wipe all the tears from my eyes. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, weeping may endure for the night, but I know joy comes in the morning. Tell them I'm going through something now, but I matter to God. God came and was born in a king-sized bed so that he would bless me to where I am today. And I thank God that I'm not a victim of circumstances. I thank God that I'm not a victim of situations. I thank God that I'm a child of God. And while he was being born in a king-sized bed, he had my name on his lips. He had my name etched in his hand. And he loves me so much because I matter. The truth is, if you're standing, I'm closing right here. The truth is that you matter so much to God. Well, watch this. You, are, you matter so much to God that he left heaven. Deacon Lawrence, he left heaven. He left his throne. Condescended. Wrapped himself in flesh. And allowed himself to be born in an animal trough filled with hay in a stable with the stench of animals. With the stench of animals. He loved you so much. You said, but he loved the world. Yes, and you are the world within yourself. He loved you individually. Yes, he knew your name. Yes, before you were ever formed in your mother's womb, he already loved you and you matter so much that the gun couldn't kill you, that the drug couldn't wipe you out, that the wreck, the accidents couldn't kill you, that cancer couldn't kill you, that diabetes couldn't kill you, that high blood pressure couldn't kill you, that poverty couldn't take you out because God said I'm a keeper. Yes, I am. I'll never leave you nor forsake you because I love you so so much. I think I'll close. But you know what the greatest tragedy is in life is to go through life and not know the truth and not know why you're here. God came to tell us the truth. Watch this. Watch this. He also came to give us life. Not just exhaling and inhaling, but abundant life. He said, I came to give you life. Why did he say that? Here it is. Because most people aren't living. You're not really living. You're just existing. Many of us in here right now are just existing. Most, 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 most people, most, most, most people get up. I'm talking about devout Christians who are shouting and praising God. Most people get up in the morning, go off to their job, come home, eat dinner, take a shower, watch television, go to bed. The next day, they do the same thing. And the next day, they do the same thing. And they think, I'm really living because I got a big car and I live in a big house. You're not living, you're just existing. You're living to work. In fact, you don't really know what life's all about until you understand why God put you here on earth the first place. He placed you here for a relationship with him. 
as great. You're not living, you're just existing unless you got a relationship with the Father. Jesus said it this way, I came to give your life purpose and meaning and significance. You're not here just to take up space. Jesus said, I came to save you, not to judge you. When the angels announced Jesus' birth, the shepherds shouted all over the place, let me help you somebody because a savior was born. God Almighty, he didn't save you to take up space in the church. As a matter of fact, you need to get out of your pew and change your position. Stop taking up space and then go out there in the parking lot, get in your automobile and go to eat lunch or dinner and do the same thing over and over again. Lay out your clothes to go to work tomorrow morning. Stop doing this. Stop just existing and start living. Live, laugh, and love. It ain't all that heavy. He gave you abundant life. Even if you are ill right now, your life is abundant in Jesus. Touch somebody. Tell them I'm going to start living out my purpose. My life is more than taking up space. Matter of fact, to prove it, I'm going to get out the space I'm in right now. Get out that space. Stop just existing. Start living the abundant life. And abundant means more than just wealth. It means health, laughter, relationships. Boy, when you don't have two dimes to rub together, but you got a great relationship with the Lord and a great relationship with somebody you love and a great relationship with your family, God Almighty, you're living an abundant life. If abundant life was wrapped up in wealth only, that'd be some, that's some wealthy uh, athletes and, 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 and celebrities that will be just overjoying with joy every day of their lives. But they're so cotton-picking miserable, they use every drug in the world to try to get some joy. They change partners like we change clothes to get some joy. But the abundant life, the abundant life is a purposeful life. The abundant life is a satisfied life. The abundant life is being pleased within yourself. The abundant life doesn't need somebody else to make it happy. The abundant life doesn't need something outside to give you joy. The abundant life is one that if you feel bad and you're all by yourself, you still rejoice. Joys. The abundant life is I don't need somebody else to validate my joy and my happiness. Touch the person next to you. The person next to me, I live the abundant life. And if you can't feel it, there must be something wrong with you. Mary, did you know? Mary didn't really know it all, but we do. We know that Jesus was not only born, but he went to the cross. He went through the tomb, and he came in our lives. I really know. Brother Green, Mary, get the mic. You, know you got the mic. That your baby boy would one day did, walk yeah, on water. Mary, did you know that your baby I give an invitation to discipleship. Will save if you're not saved, what a Christmas daughters. gift you can give yourself. Did you what a Christmas gift you can give that your to a family member. Has come to me. You call him and tell him, guess what happened today? I gave my life to Christ. This child that you deliver 
will soon deliver awesome. you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know? If you're not saved, that your baby, if you're not saved, come. Will come. If you are saved, but you sing in the church, come. come. <laughs> did you know? Did you know that your baby, your baby boy, boy was heaven's perfect land? When you kiss your little baby. You kiss the face of God. Oh. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Oh. Mary, did you know that your baby, your baby boy. boy is Lord of all creation? Oh, did Mary, you know? Did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know oh. that your baby? Baby boy is heaven's perfect land. This sleeping Man child have a you're holding Man have a is a grave. Oh, Because I know that I know I know people want to go to family. We have what's your name, sir? Keon. Keon come to be saved. What a Christmas gift. Yes, 
Janine and Sade are coming back home. Restoration. What's your name? Deja is coming to be saved. <laughs> What's your name? Huh? Jessica is coming to be saved. And dad is coming to be sure. Oh, come on here. Oh, come on. So, church, you don't know when to shout. 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 The great I am. Oh, the great I am. Mary, did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Great I am. Did you know? Alpha and Omega. Did you know? Great I am. Did you know? Make a blind man see. Did you know? Make a deaf man hear. Did you know? Make a lame man live. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Oh, did you know? Look into heaven for the benediction. Did Give me a swallow. You know? <clears throat> yes. Did you know? Ooh, did you know? Thank you, best male you know? choir in the country. Thank you, best musicians in the country. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Spirit did of the Living God. Did you know? 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 Do you know that God came to earth? That God became a man and he came for you. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Because you matter. You matter individually. Yes, we matter as a body of Christ, but you matter individually. Yeah. You, you, you. You matter, Lord. Look at the heaven for the benediction. You all right, Phyllis? Great I am. We love you so much. Look at the heaven for the benediction. I know. Mary, I know I got your account, but I have my own account. Pondexter, I know. Jan, I know. I know. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? He's the great I Do you know? He's the great I am. He's the great You look like you can say. Huh? Huh? The great I am. 
Look at the heaven for the benediction. The great I am. Great I am. Nah. Oh, don't forget, don't forget the uh, uh, the defeat cancer bears for St. Jude and a connection with Pastor's movie that'll be out on Netflix uh, spring of 2020. And uh, so you're the, you're the first to know. And uh, I'll be autographing some bears for you. And uh, we got to defeat cancer. It's important that we reach out to the children who are affected with cancer. Where you been? Come here. Y'all think I don't know my children. I know my flock. When I mean, you miss more than two Sundays, first thing I'm going to ask you, where you been? You back home? to that same sweet Jesus who was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels and received in glory. May he bless these his children now his fourth and four. Come on, shout it with a Christmas joy. Now his fourth and four. Yeah. 